ऑफ आंध्र प्रदेश श्री रमेश शंगनाथन एक्टिंग चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ आंध्र प्रदेश हाई कोर्ट एंड वर्दी चांसलर ऑफ दिस यूनिवर्सिटी वाइस चांसलर प्रोफेसर राव रजिस्ट्रार मेंबर्स ऑफ द फैकल्टी डिस्टिंग्विश गेस्ट आई बिलीव सम ऑफ द मेंबर्स ऑफ द पार्लियामेंट एंड स्टेट लेजिस्लेचर हेयर डियर स्टूडेंट्स पेरेंट्स लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन आई एम डिलाइटेड टू बी अमंग यू दिस afternoon in this uh, combined second and third convocation of uh, this university this university has uh, over a period of 8 years or so done extremely well it has uh, created a name for itself it has emerged as a center of uh, learning it is uh, one of the first choices for students who want to do uh, law at adopt law or take up law as a career and uh, it has uh, despite the initial teething problems maintained the high standards of education which is expected of a national law university uh i believe uh, the new campus of the university is uh, ready almost ready uh it is scheduled to be inaugurated sometimes in january next year i believe uh, the government has uh, uh given its fullest support financial and otherwise for this project i was told by the registrar that uh, shri chandrababu naidu has uh, not only uh, allotted something like 30 crores for the construction ongoing construction works but also given some additional land on behalf of uh, the university uh, and the entire legal fraternity i thank uh, shri chandrababu naidu for this uh, uh, this gesture and uh, uh i congratulate him because uh, uh this is an investment into the future this is an investment in institutions and when you invest in institutions that is the best possible way of uh, securing the future uh i must share with you that uh, over the past 2 uh, years or so uh, i have had uh, several occasions to meet uh, uh, shri naidu in delhi and in andhra pradesh in several functions and uh, in private meetings and i have always found him full of uh, ideas uh, his dynamism is well known uh, his uh, vision of a justice city has been discussed by him with me uh, several times in fact uh, when he first touched the subject when he first touched the subject i immediately requested professor madhav menon and the professor mohan gopal and a few other uh, very leading uh, uh, educationists to uh, draw up a broad model of what kind of uh, city we can have where you can have a high court Uh, you can have the district courts you can have the judicial academy you can have uh, the mediation and arbitration and conciliation center you can have uh, uh, the national law schools uh, in one complex in one compact uh, a place where all these uh, facilities which are so interrelated could be brought up and i must uh, uh, share with you that mr Chandra Babu Naidu has been very excited about the very idea of bringing so many uh, dimensions of legal education and legal processes and uh, legal uh, uh, institutions together. I am sure, uh, given his dynamism and his commitment and his vision for the new state of uh, Andhra Pradesh and uh, the new capital that he is building so passionately. 
uh, the justice city will also emerge as a, a dream come true and we will see a very soon not only a very very beautiful new capital in this uh, part of the country but also uh, a new justice city. Uh, legal education as we all know uh, was one of those neglected areas in our country. Uh, there are many seniors sitting here. Uh, I don't know how many of them have uh, done their law, but uh, I can tell you that if you ask the senior lawyers, uh, your professors who have gone through that stage, there were times when uh, one would get into a, a law college or a university, a faculty in the university only if one did not get admitted to any other subject, any other course. If you did not get admission even in Hindi department or in any other department, geography or some other department, one would say, all right, then let us finally go into law. Law was one of those uh, professions which was considered to be the last resort of anyone who finds no place or no acceptability anywhere. But things have changed over the time. Over the years, I think uh, uh, today we see a completely different uh, kind of approach towards law. Law today is uh, the first option among youngsters, girls and boys alike. <laughs> law today attracts the best of talent. Uh, I've seen children leaving out medicine and engineering and opting for law, uh, not only because law uh, has uh, rewards in terms of monetary gains, but also because law is uh, a one profession which brings recognition, which brings applause, which brings repute, which, uh, uh, which gives you the option of remaining a free thinker, which keeps your future in your own hands because it all depends how much hard work you put in the profession. If you work hard, if you are committed, if you are sincere, you are bound to make a mark. That is the reason why law is slowly emerging as a, one of the greatest uh, options which the younger generations in this country will have. But we still cannot be complacent. We have today something like 17 or 18 national law universities from the days when uh, only third divisioners would seek admission. Today we have situations where the best of the talent is competing to get into these 18 universities. These 18 universities today have an intake capacity of something like 2,000 students only. Today, every year, you will find around 60,000 law graduates passing out from different colleges and universities in the country. Out of 60,000, just about 2,000 pass out from the national law schools. 40, 58,000 even today go to the ordinary law colleges. And may I tell you that I am one of the products of that ordinary law faculty in a university which was not a law university. As the Chief Minister just now mentioned, that you have the good fortune of studying in a national law school where you have the best of the teachers, the best of facilities, the best of opportunities. But may I tell you that when I opted for law, there was no classroom for the law department. The law department was started without there being any building, without there being a classroom. So what we would do, we would wait till 2 o'clock in the month of June when, when the morning times used to be there in Jammu, from 8 to 2, students of English department would come, they would study and once they would go home after 2 o'clock and the entire area was deserted, we would enter that classroom and start studying. Now if a person who has